Alright, so we've got a slightly more complicated piece of mapping here to do now, and this is obviously the entire shoulder system. So what I'm going to do is do a UVW control U. Oh, no. my control key's stuck. There we go. UVW map and box map this entire piece. Link a vertebral poly. Okay, this gives us a basic UVW map. Now, kind of I'll demonstrate this just to show you. If I grab this and in my diffuse I'll stick a checker and just apply it. I'm going to rename this material checker. There you go. And let's change the tiling on it. Alright, now at the minute it doesn't look too bad, but what you have to bear in mind is, especially at the back here, um, this isn't unwrapped. So if I go into my UVW map here, sorry, unwrap UVW, and then just go straight to edit, everything's overlapping each other. You don't stand to hope in hell of being able to paint this at all. So what I need to do is select my face, control A because I'm going to select all of it, in my edit. And basically I need to normal map this as a box and click OK. And this will give us our basic, really basic kind of unwrap on this. OK, I'm going to turn off the check button that we've got going. Now the reason that we do this is because <coughs> If we're painting this object, um, or its map rather, as an example, you're going to paint. You have to bear with me because it gets a bit slow at this point. You're going to paint the front of these here, for example, okay, and put a nice texture on them. But if you do that, the texture is also going to be painted on the front of this. Because if you look, this is a piece down here that we're working on. So now what we've got to do is break this up a little bit more so that we can actually paint this. Stuff that doesn't matter too much is stuff inside here unless you really need to see it. So we'll work on the stuff that we do need to see for the moment. So I'm going to start selecting my face. And this is an important part here, this front piece. Just go to my material editor and turn off preview. You'll notice Max is starting to chug a little bit. Okay, and what I need to do is just plain our map that piece. And you'll notice we've got this big bit here just appeared. Turn that off. Now then, I don't think the alignment on this is correct, so let's just mess around with the alignment. There, that's much better. Okay, let's scale this down. And by doing this, it means that we can move stuff from in front of these so we'll be able to texture it. Okay, and I'm going to move this over to here. Just for the moment. Alright, let's look at this. And I know that this has got a big pile of rivets on top of it as well. So what I'm going to do is select the rivets. Getting quite close while I'm doing this. Let's go through them all. Now here. And then here. Oops, come back a bit. Okay, and I can just click the little plus, and that'll grow our selection a little bit. And now we've got the entire top here. So let's plane our map that as well. And let's try and find a good alignment for it. There we go, the Z alignment. Let's scale this down a bit. It's great because the UV map tools, compared to what they were, are just absolute joys to use. They used to be an absolute sodding nightmare. 
Okay, let's scale this down to the same width as this. If we put our pieces kind of rationally, then it makes our job a lot easier as well. Okay, and push this to here. Don't worry about getting it to fit inside the boundaries yet. That's not too important. What we need to do first is just kind of get our model working, really. Okay, now I'm going to select... Sorry, I've got a slight itch on my beard. I'm going to select in there. And let's grow that out. Now we can see which piece this is. I don't really want to have to select this piece, so I'll just do it manually instead. Okay, that's one part. That's another. You see, if we do it this way, it means we're not going to be accidentally painting over things we've already done. Unless you just want to apply a plain blue kind of coat of paint to it. That's your lookout, really. Okay, so we've got this piece here. Now what I'm going to do is pull back in here and go planar on it again. And then find the right alignment for us. Actually, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to scale it in. A little bit wonky. However, it can be fixed. Let's change to vert mode. Grab this one. And then scale it down again. Okay, just pop it here. And let's have a look over here again. Now we've got these fins going on. I'm not really too fussed about the fins. These back panels here. Let's see where these back panels are on this. Looks like it's there, look. Let's separate these parts off as well. And I'll select these. Thus learning the old adage, remember to select the rivets first. Oh, that funny, when I start using a Wacom again, it's going to take me kind of months to get used to the workflow. I used to be really proficient at using a Wacom as well. But now it's like, pfft, you know. Always the same, though. It's because I've been using this rollerball for so blooming long. Okay, yeah, just make sure I don't accidentally select too much stuff. No, nope, that's fine. Uh, let's plane all that. Well, I'm not seeing it, which means that it probably needs to be aligned properly. There we go. I 
And yes, this sort of thing does take a while, to be quite honest. It's just the way it goes. Okay, now this one. This is going to be inverted, by the way, because it's mapping it by the looks of things in the front and back. Like I say, there's no real way of rushing this job. We're doing the kind of quickest, dirtiest kind of UVW unwrap we can. Editing UVs. People always think, you know, this is the least fun part of the modelling process. But I don't know, you know. It used to be that I used to just like the modelling aspect of 3D. I used to like making the things look pretty. And then it was a case of, well, you know, I liked animating. I liked being able to make my models move and do stuff. And then I finally realised eventually that, you know, I also liked having them, even though I'm colour blind, to look nice. Because they may look really good when they're already, you know, lit and animated and stuff. But if you don't stick even a simple texture on them, they don't look as good. Okay, let's plain arm out that. There we go. So it's really something that's worth doing. Alright, let's get these things back to back. There we go. If you look down here now, this area is starting to be a lot easier for us to read. All I'm doing really is taking the main detail areas though. The really big main detail areas at the moment. I'm going to do these two. Remember my own rules and map these first. I mean, select these first. I know it's a nuisance when Max is chugging. And if you're finding it really slowing down a lot, you may need to just completely cut your scene down. There we go. And I'm probably, well, I'm definitely not in this tutorial going to have time to show you the joys of unwrapping the entire lot. This isn't going to happen. And, you know, I love end-to-end -end tutorials and I love making them, but I did the complete unwrap on Ed 209 and Burr. It was like 11 hours of this. And there was no variation. It was all the same damn thing. So... You're really not missing much. Okay, get planar. And check our alignment. Had a feeling it was a Z. I'm going to line it up over the correct piece. Scale it down a bit. There we are. And I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. Remember, if you can do this for this one piece, you can do it for all of it. Okay, so... There we go. I'll just move my isolation handle to a different screen. Trust me, this is a lot more interesting to you if you've got some nice music on as well. And maybe drinking something and, you know, occasionally having friends or co-workers coming over and chatting to you. Just sitting talking into a microphone. Or listening to someone who's talking into a microphone. 
is not as much fun. You can make it more fun, however, by, you know, every time I unwrap a large chunk, take a hefty swig from a bottle of gin. It'll brighten your day and make it go much faster. What I tend to do is I work for the big parts, incidentally, and then for the little chaffy parts that don't need as much detail, perhaps, I'll just reduce them in size and squirrel them away. There we are. Okay, just going to click the plus. And planar on the z. There we go. And I'm just going to scale this down first, just to the overall correct size. And then scale it in just on one direction. There we are. Now this stuff over here, I think I'm going to put to about here. And I'm going to scale this stuff down a little bit. The thing is, no matter how big you make your map, you're always going to find yourself kind of running short of places to plop detail and stuff. So, it's one of those things, unfortunately. Okay, put these next to each other. What other massive great big parts have we got that we can do? Well, I can see one already. Let's go over this bit. We can make this planar. I'll, incl I'll include the uh, wolf decal that we've got on the front here as well. Like I say, the good thing is that it's really, really easy for us to kind of select these bigger parts like this. There we go. And I'll select this bit and this one. Okay, and let's click grow once. Should be all we need. I'm not going to do the purity seals. Not at the moment, anyway. I can do those all separately. Okay, and plain art. Just going to move this over to here. Now, this is our right hand side one. I'm going to scale it in just on one side. Let's see if we can do that a bit better. Planar. There, that's much better. And move this to about here. And then just scale it down overall in size. There, like that. You see, by doing it this way as well, we can see what's the front, what's the back, and all this kind of business. Okay, next. Do the same again on this side. Testing. Oh, good, my audio is working. Had this sudden, horrific worry that I'd recorded this part without any audio. Because I record mostly kind of on the fly with my audio. And that works almost all the time, simply because I'm so damned used to talking while I record. However, it can sometimes throw out errors simply because, you know, maybe I've adjusted the microphone or maybe someone's borrowed my microphone or 
even on one one happy occasion I'd kicked it out of the socket without realising and then you'll go and you'll record an entire part and the thing is by doing it on the fly like this I can explain what I'm doing and hopefully get across kind of some level of understanding for the way I'm operating whereas if I go back it always tends to be a lot more stilted and I kind of get bored and I end up you know just talking even more crap than usual so I do prefer doing it this way ok let's have a look planar um, let's align it there we go scale it down overall I mean if you enjoyed doing the banner piece which was really quite simple by comparison to this you'll really enjoy this bit you know it's a lot of fun bringing your model to life and making it look nice there we go okay so that's uh, some more of the riveted areas now let's do the sides Like I say, a lot of the things you're going to be fighting against in this to make it work are things like logistical placement. This is one of the biggest parts in the entire model. Yeah, so There's a lot of pieces in this that we have to unwrap compared to the other parts. The other parts you can, you know, make yourself a drink and relax and just do them slowly and take your time. This one though requires obviously a bit more A bit more kind of end-to-end uh, -end work than the other one does. Okay, just click grow once. And planar it again. There we go. These are all the really important bits as well that we're doing, simply because this is where we're going to have the most paint, the most visible paint. I mean, areas on the inside of here we're not going to see as much. They should still have some paint on, but they're not going to be as visible. And these parts inside here are just, you know, mechanical parts. They're not going to really... oops better undo those selections. They're not going to be really seen hardly at all unless you decide you want them to be seen if it's, you know, battle scarred or whatever. There we go. And the good thing is, of course, that if we're doing the old photoshoppery for the texture we can get away with a lot more than we can if we're just modelling the detail on. Though of course this much should become apparent even if you just watched the how to make the banner texture tutorial. Which looked basic as hell but gave us really quite a nice effect. Okay, same again for this. When I make holes like this, it's kind of useful because you can drop other things inside it. Try and avoid leaving blooming great big holes wherever you can. There we go. Now then, starting to lose the massive surfaces that we had before. We've still got this big area under here. However, this usually has our, um, oh, what do you call it on? I can't even remember what it's called now, which is a bit useless. That kind of area that receives the uh, hip area, if you know what I mean. Well, let's just quickly plane on this. I'm going to Z it. There we go. Bring it up to here. And I'm going to scale it down. Now, because this is a really minor part that doesn't really have too much importance to me, 
I'm going to stick it inside here. Scale it a bit more. And then it'll be out of the way. There we go. So this way it will get mapped, but it's not going to get, you know, a ton of detail on it. Now over here, this part, interestingly, is probably going to need slightly more mapping than the other one. Now one of the problems we've got with this is it's got absolutely shed tons of verts on it. However, we shall adapt to adopt and improve, as they say. And that one. Top's important only if you think it is. Ah, oh, why not? Okay, let's just click grow a bit. Okay, that should do. Now over here, we can actually do the normal mapping directly on this, and we can box map it. And that'll give us this piece here, which has basically been broken down into little parts to make it a bit easier for us. Then I'm going to scale this down and rotate it. Scale it again. And use freeform mode for this as well, which is cool. Freeform mode again. There we go. That way we don't get any overlap. What else have we got over here? We've got this front piece here with these bits and bobs on, so I'm going to have to get in close if I'm going to select these. Select the one on each and grow. Makes it a lot easier. Nearly got it all. There we are. Now grow it. And I'm going to do a plane art on that. I'm trying to get the alignment right. There we go. It's just a case of moving this over to here. And what's started as an insurmountably, stupidly, over-the-top, difficult task is now becoming a considerably easier task as we go along. Slot that in there. As long as we can make things look and make sense as we're doing it, things become a lot easier. Cylinder. Cylinder's a good example of this. Let's just grow this piece out as an example. Okay, just check this piece. It comes pretty much all the way back. And what we can do with this is... Well, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Let's start with a cylindrical map. And do the alignment on it until we get one that fits. Eh, close. Hmm, much closer. There we go. And that gives us our cylindrical map. Although we need to work on the front part there. We'll need to separate that off. So I'll just put this in here. 
and select this and just do a quick planar on it. Make it nice and small because it doesn't need to be massive. And then just move it across to there. Okay. We can do the same again as well with these. I'll just come round. That way I can do them both. And just grow. And then if I decap there and there and do a cylindrical. Wait a moment. Right, and then just check my lines. Until I find the one that seems to fit best. Looks like it's going to be X, doesn't it? next to each other. And then scale them right down. Because again, they don't need to be massive. And this way we're only going to be left with detail parts that aren't really that fantastically important by comparison. Now, over here, we have our chimneys. These are obviously quite an important part. So I'm just going to marquee grab the polygons here. And click Grow. Because, as with my style when I built this, it's just a pretty much a single large object. As you can see. Okay. And then what I can do is either box map this or cylinder map this. Ideally I should only do one at a time. Do it again. I just want to use this bit if I can. And cylindrical. And let's see if we can get it to work. Close. But no biscuit. Ah, that one looks like it'll give me a biscuit. Makes some funky shapes, doesn't it? Straighten up these birds. It's good to get these kind of smokestacks sorted though, because they are a very important piece of this. There we are. The remainder mainly being just rivets and bolts and things. Okay, do this one. Deselect these three. Yeah, it should do it. And again, cylindrical on the Z. And yes, there's some leftover little verts sticking out. No, I don't mind. Uh, 
and bring these down to about here. There we go. That's much better. All right, let's see what we've got left down in here. Mainly decals and crap. Which is fine. We don't actually have any large parts. We've got the insides of this left. Just here. So if we just grow that. Doesn't look basically all selected on the inside of here. What I can do then is just do a quick box map. And that'll give me this shape. That's a bit messy to be quite honest. It's not what I want. Another look at this. We could do a planar map, I suppose. Before we do, I need to make sure everything is selected here. It's better. Planar. Find the best alignment. There we go. Have a look at this. And let me see. Move this up to here. And then if I select the inside polygons. and scale these down then grow it scale those down a bit yeah that's fine it's just got the inside edges there scale this one down okay that's fine bring this part all down completely Let's put it somewhere tidy. And again over here. And down here. Oh no, my mistake. Right, just grow and the plane I'm at this one as well. I'll do that again because I don't think that was quite right. Oh, I see. I've got both sides playing our mapping simultaneously. That'll teach me not to concentrate. There we go. Align X. Okay, and that's the inside. So we've got this great big area here, which is for our large pieces of detail. And then down here we've basically got like pipe work and crap. So what I'm going to do here is select this lot. And let's see, I can probably just box map this lot into oblivion if I want to.
That's no good. Let's see what else we can do. Normal mapping. Uh, let's see. We'll have box map. And click OK. Which is pretty much what we had before anyway. We could just flatten our mapping and fill the holes I suppose. This will make lots of little pieces. And as you can see it takes a while to do. Just I want to try and get some of these little pieces out of the way. Although before I do so I might want to uh, take the purity seals off the list. Press escape. Get these purity seals first. Use the move tool on them. Here's another one. There we go. Right, what I'm going to do instead is just move this stuff into a tidy position. See, if I move it down here, then I can continue unwrapping this later on as I get more time to refine and clean up the model. But for the moment, I can lock the UVs that I need, which are these fellows, over into the rest of it. Let's get these to the right size. Let's put them up there. Then we'll take these two seals and just put them down there. I mean, this covers all the important stuff. The rest of it mainly is pipe work and hidden detail, and this mass of fins, of course, over here, and this kind of box and these bits here. I mean, these bits are quite important, I suppose. So, hang on. I'll take this this side of them. And we'll grow them. There we are. And let's do a quick planar on them. Close. Closer. There we are. Move these up here. And then move these by vert. There we go. There we are. Straightened up a little bit. Then go into face mode and just grab this bit. Scale. There we go. And then I can pop this in there. There we go. And that should do for the moment. There we are. Just zoom in a bit. So we can see we've got the big areas here and we've got the little chaffy parts down there. And the little chaffy parts will just block in in one colour. And these parts here will do the actual detailing work on. OK, so that should do it for the moment. So, if you want to, you can save your UVs. So if you do that, make yourself a new folder. And then in here you'd call this shoulder one so you'd know what it is. There we are. OK, see you in the next bit.